Welcome to the Love of the Star podcast. I'm Bobby Belt, Dallas Cowboys insider for 105 through the fan in Dallas. Joined as always by former NFL scout and Super Bowl winner Brian Broaddus. He is now the co-host of the G-Bag Nation, 2 to 7 p.m. Central, Monday through Friday on 105 through the fan in Dallas. He's also the pre and post game co-host on the Dallas Cowboys radio network. Brian Broaddus, how are you doing today? I'm doing excellent, Robert. Thank you very much. Great to be with you as always. Absolutely excited to uh, we, we got a little bit of a little bit of gossip. Because it is, it is oh, the dead season. <laughs> this is gossip. Gossip's Old great. Guy loves gossip. This is well, and it's we'll we'll investigate the gossip a little bit because I think it does need a little bit of fact checking. Okay. Um, but we're gonna, of course, we've got our mailbag coming up a little bit later. Uh, next segment, Brian's got some uh, questions that we're gonna kick around, and yeah. uh, you guys can answer them in the comments section on the YouTube as well if you like. Um, but we'll get to the mailbag and then some of those questions. Um, but we're gonna lead off today with a report that had largely been buried um, in the news cycle for the last three weeks. Uh, this is a story that was actually written about three weeks ago by a writer named Ty Dunn. And Ty Dunn, for those who are not familiar with him, uh, he has a subscription site. A lot of these writers lately, you'll, you'll see they go independent. Um, anybody who's familiar with NBA, Mark Stein did this, goes independent, has Substack. Um, Tyler Dunn is the same sort of way is a guy who had written for Bleacher Report, covered the Bills for a little bit, covered the Packers for four years, um, but is a guy who's really passionate about long form journalism. He likes to write really long, in-depth, you know, stories where he's talked to a bunch of different people. He's a storyteller. That's what his his Don real Van drive Yatta is. Kind of guy. Um, yeah. I mean, some of it's it's not always as investigative as Don Van Nata. Sometimes it's just yeah. telling a story, but I there's love definitely, Don Nata, by the way, I, I do too. Um, but yeah. it's more like, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's telling a story, whether that's a good or a bad or an investigative one. Ty Dunn is very, very good. Um, but he's got this independent platform now where last year, uh, he had kind of gotten into the news cycle because he was the one who broke the story about Sean McDermott talking mm -hmm. about how courageous the 9-11 hijackers were in Buffalo, and that caused a big controversy last December. Um, that was his story that he wrote as a guy in Buffalo who had a lot of connections. Uh, his biggest claim to fame was when he was at Bleacher Report, and he wrote the Aaron Rodgers-Mike McCarthy divorce story that was everywhere that talked about Aaron Rodgers doesn't think Mike McCarthy's very smart. Uh, Mike McCarthy's away from practice. He's getting massages. So that was Tyler Dunn's story. Um, and so he's somebody who's broken a couple of really big stories before um, and is a fantastic writer. And a couple weeks ago, he wrote this story about the Dallas Cowboys called What in the Hell Are the Dallas Cowboys Doing? And this is something that had kind of flown under the radar because it's a subscription service until somebody from uh, SI went ahead and had uh, you know basically summarized it and aggregated it. Josh Sanchez over at uh, Cowboys SI had written about this, that there is a little bit of tension um or, or that mike mccarthy is a little fed up with being undermined quote unquote by jerry jones um and this comes from what is described as in ty dunn's piece a former cowboys personnel man which is a little it's a little Ooh. broad and we'll dive into Ooh. specifics of that here in a sec but one of the quotes that this former personnel man gave was uh, at least give McCarthy a one-year extension. You may not have to give him another five years, but at least extend them out one year and extend out all the coaches one year to give them a level of security. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the undermining, uh, he had said McCarthy's doing the best he can. Some of the people I've talked to have said that he's getting a bit fed up with it or he's getting fed up with it a little bit. Comes back around, says something else, says, uh, talking about Dak Prescott specifically. He said, it's hard. I feel bad for Dak. I think Dak's a really good quarterback who's capable of taking his team to the Super Bowl. He's got to overcome a lot of things. So basically just kind of some insight from somebody who, by Ty Dunn's own admission, is not in the building any longer uh, for the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. But, Brian, before we get to the specifics of who might be, be speaking this way yeah. out there, just in general, your thoughts – about the suggestion that Mike McCarthy's tired of being undermined by Jerry Jones. Sure. Uh, you should have given everybody at least a one-year deal so that they could have felt some security. What are your thoughts in general just on that criticism or that discussion? First off, scouts, former player personnel guys, whatever, love to talk. Sure. Love to talk, but, man, you didn't hear that from me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, yeah, this this is this is what's going on. But man, you didn't hear that from me, and you know. So 
Yeah, that uh, scouting rumor chatter, whatever you want to call it. Not uncommon. Not uncommon at all. And there's a lot of people like, hey, but the 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 hazards you work with this though, sometimes when you do this, is people get real smart and figure out who you are. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And uh, I will say this, Bill Parcells hated me because I had a lot of friends in the media. But Jerry and Steven wanted me to know what was going on around the league. Mm-hmm. So I had a lot of I had a lot of insider friends. So I got to know Peter King really well. That's how I got to know Pete Prisco really well. You know, that's how I, I got to know the various uh, insiders. Uh, Adam Schefter. You know, I got to know guys around the league. You know, was I always talking about our team? No. Was I giving yeah. information about our team? No. But you could kind of learn about, you know, you could kind of be a little bit of, well, think of it this way. Or, well, you're not going the right direction that way, you know. So you don't have to directly tell somebody your business. But I learned a lot what was going on around the league. And Parcells hated me for that. Hated me. Yeah. And one of the reasons why I lost my job or my contract wasn't renewed was because of that. Because I had a relationship. But I can't tell you how many times that I went to Bill Parcells' office and he's complaining to me about, you know, well, you're, you, you, these guys know you. You know, these guys know you. And he's talking to Will McDonough, you know, of NBC Sports. Yeah. And he's talking to uh, the late, great Chris Mortensen. You know, I'm listening to him have conversations with these guys. But he's not, he's got a problem with me. And, you know, he's doing the same thing. Now he's the head coach. But the Joneses wanted me to figure things out. You know, there yeah. are ways to do that. So, long story short... I guess, is that former personnel guys talk, personnel guys talk. It's part of what we do. It really is what we do. Now, okay, my thought about this. Three years ago, I think I think Mike McCarthy had no idea what he was getting into. Agreed. I think he came here with the idea that, okay, I'm back in the NFL – I'm back to being a head coach. I'm back on. I don't think Mike McCarthy knew the level of this the stage. No, I. I don't. I think he would tell you. I think he would tell you that. Yeah, I think Mike McCarthy, where where Sean Payton would tell you, you coached the Dallas Cowboys. They know your name in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, they know your name. They know who you are. When you coach the Cincinnati Bengals or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they might not know your name all that well. Mike was on a stage, a very, a very prominent stage. The Green Bay Packers is a nice stage. It's a, it's a good football team. But this is a different stage. And I think that Mike, three years ago, had no idea what he's into. Today... You know, we're, you and I work Cowboy games together. We work the post-game show together, too. Yep. And you go in there and you get great audio from the locker room. I, myself, Zach, uh, uh, Zach uh, Wolchuk, Wolchuk. Mm -hmm. broadcast maybe 15 feet away from Mike McCarthy between us and a glass. And I watched Mike McCarthy do a press conference with a guy from Gilmer, a reporter from Gilmer. The Gilmer Mirror, baby. Gilmer, I watch him do Calvin Watkins and Mickey Spagnola. Where's everybody else? They're with Jerry Jones. Where's Bobby Belt? He's with Jerry yep. Jones. You know, where is where is you know Blake Elliott from 1053 the fan? He's with Jerry Jones. See, so I think that that Mike now he understands. And and to his point or his credit or to the person leaking the information out, Mike being upset, I think Mike would thinks that, you know what, any other city, Atlanta, Charlotte, Phoenix, I would have had an extension by now. 
I would have been, I would have had an extension, but here I don't have an extension. So I don't think that Mike McCarthy needs the money particularly. I think Mike McCarthy wants to be respected. And sure, I think as if, anybody does. Yeah, and I think if Mike McCarthy leaves here, he will get another job. I think so. Because he has proven that he can win again. Now, the playoff stuff hasn't been good this time around for him. But he has won a lot of games. And, you know, to hire uh, Dave Canales, I think I got his name right, yep. at you know, Carolina. Do you hire him or do you hire, you know, there's going to be guys that they're going to get. Ben Johnson at Detroit's going to get an opportunity, whatever. But if you want, if you're, if you're an organization that's hired two or three coaches in a row and they're young guys and they haven't worked out, or like the Giants have, the Giants have hired some coaches and it hadn't worked out since Tom Coughlin. Right. So all of a sudden it's like, man, we need to get a legitimate head coach. That's what we need to do. And so with that being said, I think Mike McCarthy feels pretty good he'll get a job. But I can understand – I can understand a little bit of frustration. I don't think it's to the point it was three years ago, though. I think Mike McCarthy knows there's some exactly acceptance. what he's in right now. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe Mike McCarthy's not directly saying that to people, but he's, but he's kind of like, yeah, it's different here. It's a different. It's different. You know, it's uh, anywhere Which else. It is. I would probably have been extended by now. So. I, I think that, that there's probably this, I think, ties on to something here. I, I really do. Yeah, and it is, it like, it obviously is different. And I think, you know, it's, and, and to be clear, what Ty reported was that there is a former person who worked in the building mm -hmm. who, talking to people in the building, are relaying to him that they think Mike is being so this is not even anything where it's claimed where Mike told me this. This isn't an unnamed right. So this there's a little bit from, of tell yeah. there's a little bit of Mike telephone. To somebody else to tie. This or and it could have and it could have lost its meaning by the that sure. point, to sure. in all honesty. Um and so I think that's important. Here's what I'll say. Um I think Mike McCarthy's gotten a lot better at dealing with what it means to be the coach of the Cowboys over the last three years. I think I if you were to if you were to ask me where has he grown the most as a coach since he got to Dallas? It's the expectation or the understanding of what his job is. Exactly. And that was a real problem for him, I think, the first year or two he was here. Yes, it was. Um, I think that there's still a little bit of it, though, that he, he doesn't quite get it here. He doesn't quite understand. Like, like it's 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 he's gotten better, but he's still he doesn't get it the way Jason Garrett did. And Jason Garrett, for all his faults, I'm not saying Jason Garrett was a great coach, but Jason Garrett understood this job and understood yeah. what it he, was. He was family. Mike yeah. McCarthy is an outsider that's trying to get into the family. Sure. And I think the here's the other thing I would say. I know a lot of people don't like that Jerry Jones is the general manager and they feel like that's not a real title. He just gifted it to himself. That's I'm not here to argue that. And that's that's not the discussion. Al Davis taught him that. The reality is his title is general manager. Right. And I don't know that you can totally let's take a talk about seattle last year pete carroll's in seattle john schneider a guy that that you know you've known for a long time mm -hmm. if somebody goes to john schneider and john schneider's answering questions about personnel mm -hmm. or about different things relating to the game nobody considers that undermining because they consider john schneider's part of you know mm -hmm. the the roster building and is involved in probably a lot of the game plan meetings and everything else. And he's in charge of some contracts. And, and so that is somebody who is an ultimate authority who it's not undermining. That's your boss. And that's, right. that is, he is in the chain of command in football. That's the reality for Mike McCarthy, whether people think it should be or not. That's the reality of Mike McCarthy here with Jerry Jones. He is the owner, but he's also the general manager. So it, to me, it's not undermining for him to talk about personnel issues because that's his title, that's to his be title. honest. Yep. And if you get Brett Veach in Kansas City and he wants to talk about things, that's not undermining Andy Reid. That's his nope. job and he's above him. So I, I think that if that's really how McCarthy were to feel about it, again, we don't know. It's kind of distant the way the discussion goes. But if that's really how he feels, I think he needs to have a slight perspective change in terms of what the expectation should realistically be. Now to the question of the validity of what it is. Here's the only thing that caught my eye. 
said a former Cowboys personnel man. And that was, I said, we'd circle back to this. That was the, the most intriguing part of this story to me Yeah, because there's nobody who's had less turnover in their personnel department over the last four years than the Dallas Cowboys. They just don't have it. Um, there have been, guys I can think of two, there have been two people yeah. to depart the personnel department. Um, Lionel Vital, who is the former director of college scouting. Uh, and these are all public, by the way, I'm not outing anybody. You can see yeah. these are two guys who have left their jobs in recent years. Lionel Vital, um, who did not leave on good terms here in Dallas. Not, not at all. Absolutely did not leave on good terms. I don't think Lionel Vital is still talking to anybody in the Dallas Cowboys I organization. Think anybody's interested in talking to Lionel Vital. I don't. I think they're happy not to speak to each other. Yeah. And so I think that that's something where very unlikely that Lionel Vital would have that and then be out there being a source. Uh, the other was their former national scout, Drew Fabianich, who He's West Virginia now is the yeah went to Auburn, Auburn, then West Virginia, and again similarly not to Lionel, not similar in that sense, but similarly that. I don't know that he's talking to people here on a regular basis in Dallas. So I don't think he's checking yeah, up he, with people regularly. He felt like he had to go and be his own guy. And you yeah. know, he just couldn't be that right here. I mean, I mean, get an opportunity to run a department. That yeah, I think, I think, yeah. and I, I think that's it. I don't think it's bitter the way the Lionel Vital no, thing was, no, but I think no. it's, but I think Dallas is in his rear view mirror at this point. They are. They very and so much I, are. I, I don't, I don't think he's placing calls back here to just no, get dirt. No, on. No, so no. that's two people. So who's the personnel man? I, I think what what I was struck by, Brian, was it it seemed to me that this was a little bit of cover for a source, maybe like like a little bit of, oh, let me call you something yes. here. I think what's much more likely is Ty Dunn worked with the Packer or covered the Packers from 2011 to 2015. Plenty of people came over from that yeah. era in Green Bay yeah. with Mike McCarthy right. and then were sent on their way who still feel great about Mike McCarthy. Joe Philbin, uh, Rob Davis, uh, Joe Witt, all of yeah. these guys came over from Green Bay. Any one of them, and technically they work with players, you could call them personnel if you like. Absolutely. Um, so I think th it's very unlikely to me that this is any sort of a front office source. This strikes me, Brian, that the person who would be talking about this is just somebody who is very fond of Mike McCarthy, feels the need to go to his defense, and is somebody who is no longer, was probably more likely a coaching staff member who's think, been with McCarthy for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I think that Ty used the moniker of personnel guy to cover for something else. Sure. But yeah, I, I know I know Lionel very well. I've worked with Lionel for a long time. I don't think he would do anything. Drew, I talk to Drew all the time. He's doing great in West Virginia. I don't think he would have an axe to grind on any of this stuff. Or no, he's looking help, ahead. Want to help or give information. That's not his work. But you did mention three guys, and all all are suitable names. Joe sure. Philbin left here. Joe Philbin left here. You know things with the offensive line. They developed, a, you know, Terrence Steele and all that. And Jerry Jones basically saying, "I'm not paying him. No, we're gonna do something else here." And then oh, Mike if you Spurs, if you want if if you want to talk about those three names right there, none of those three who are no longer in Dallas, were right. pushed out the door by Mike McCarthy. Not at all. Joe, Joe Witt yeah. took a job with Dan Quinn. Yeah. Rob Davis yeah. and Joe Philbin were let go by Jerry Jones. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So if there is a, if there's, it's the old proverbial ax to grind, you, you know, you get, but you got three really good names. I, I, you know, if you were playing the game Clue right now, you would be keep moving around the board and you would, in the, in the, in you, the yeah, you packet, guessed. you're like, okay, yeah. I'm going to solve this one. Yeah, and it is, you know, it's this Joe guy Philbin with, with the, the iPhone uh, yeah. and Buffalo. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> That's but it's it's an interesting discussion. Of this. Again, I think when you're playing that game of telephone, I would not say that regardless of probably the best of intentions of whoever this source is, you're not doing Mike McCarthy any favors. I don't think no. um, by doing this. And I would bet I would bet this isn't exactly the way Mike McCarthy feels, the way it was represented. I'm sure sometimes he does get frustrated. We all he, have yeah, absolutely. suspected that. Everybody gets frustrated working in that building. Yeah, I'm sure he sometimes gets frustrated. But the other aspect of this is I'm sure that if Mike McCarthy knows who was this source, I would venture a guess that as soon as this started circulating, Mike McCarthy placed a phone call to that person and said, I wish you would but, not have done that. Bobby, you're you're around Mike McCarthy a lot more than me. Mike McCarthy is very in tune to what is being said about him. Mm -hmm. Very in tune. Yep. So 
when this all went down, Mike McCarthy, whether he's in Green Bay, Wisconsin right now, you know, at the house, I'm sure he placed a call to somebody you're talking about. I would, that would be my that would be my guess that one of the three four guys that you mentioned he put a call to one of those guys and said you just did me no favors yeah you know and but, it's but you're not you know hey I love you man but don't do that ever again kind of a thing sure I, it was like a, your heart was in the right place but please don't do that yeah, that doesn't exactly. help me exactly. it's 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 similar to when we've talked I about your, I don't need your help you when we've talked me? about like you know. CD Lamb's mom saying something about Dak or Micah Parsons' brother said it's probably the same conversation. I love you. You're not helping me do my job right now. Just exactly. please don't. Yeah, please don't. Not right now. All right. Uh, you're listening to the Love the Star podcast. The Love the Star is an Odyssey podcast. You can find it on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Brian. Uh, really quickly before we jump into your uh, questions and answers, and we've gone 21 minutes here, and I just I I feel borderline naked not having <laughs> shouted out chill boys at this point and i'm not naked because i'm wearing chill boys uh mm. boxers so uh just a reminder that chill boys they are a wonderful sponsor at uh love the start and again if you if you want to support us go place an order with chill boys that yeah. would be that is how you can show your support for what brian and i do and uh we'd be very grateful for that so just go to chillboys.com enter promo code star you get 15% off. Just order some socks, get some underwear, some shirts, whatever. It's all great. And we appreciate Chill Boys, and we appreciate you guys very much uh, if you would uh, want to go do that. All right, Brian, uh, I'm ready for your for your questions before we get into the mailbag. This is the uh, Brian Broaddus mailbag before the Dean Julia Love the Star mailbag. Mm -hmm. uh, so what do you got for me here? Well, I always, I'm always the guy It seems like I'm answering questions from you. So I'm going to turn the table on you today and let you give me some answers to these guys. All right. Bobby, what's the role of Damone Clark on this team? Um, I, I think if everybody's healthy, Damone Clark is a rotational linebacker who is in a prove it year. Um, Damone Clark is an incredible athlete. There's his rookie year fresh off of a very serious surgery where a lot of people thought there was zero chance he was going to play football that year. Mm -hmm. uh, he is seen running down Justin Fields to the sideline. Sure. And I mean, that's... That's not easy to do. He's a great athlete. The instincts aren't always there. And I'll say this, Brian, you, I'm sure, know this from your time in the NFL and doing scouting. Pretty consistently, when you talk to talent evaluators, can I fix uh, your bad hand technique? Mm -hmm. Can I can I get this out of you? Can I, you know, can maybe we do some different things to get your athletic testing numbers a little bit out of it? Can we, can we do certain mm -hmm. things to get you in shape, make you stronger? Um, are you going to pick this up, pick that up? Are you going to be a good student? Those are all questions that they ask. A a giant red flag for talent evaluators is instincts. Because yeah. it's like, I you can't coach it. Like, you just, mm -hmm. you don't, if you don't have it, that's terrifying. Um, and a lack of instincts has killed, I know the Cowboys, that was their feeling with Charles Tapper. That yeah. they felt like Charles Tapper, obviously the injuries played a part too, but they were just like, Charles Tapper had everything to be a good football player to be a good defensive end he just didn't have instincts and uh i think that that's kind of where they're in the evaluation process right now with damone clark is are the instincts there if they're there i think they'll feel good about it but right now i think that ultimately he's just a depth piece linebacker expectations for awesome richards this camp um <sighs> Within the like within training camp, how do I expect him to look in practice, or what are my expectations yeah, heading to training camp for him this season? Your expectations level right now for Awesome Richards. Um, I was never, I was never a big Awesome Richards fan when he was coming out of school. I, I mean, there were things to like about him, but mm -hmm. I did feel like it was the cow. It was kind of like the best of their options left over. When the Cowboys got to that pick in the fifth round, they were like, "All right, we need somebody with some tackle guard flex." Um, let's go here. And I don't think it was one where they necessarily thought, oh, wow, we got tremendous value here like they did with uh, other players this past draft specifically. Um, but, you know, I biggest thing probably would be I, I don't want to see you on the ground. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want to see you losing reps consistently. Um, you know, I would love it if I know they've been working him inside at guard and tackle. I would just I would love it if the reps at tackle would look good, because sure. if I can get. I feel like I can find enough guys on this team right now to give me some snaps at guard and play it effectively. I, I don't know what I have as a swing tackle necessarily, or I don't know what I have at left tackle if you don't feel good about Tyler Guyton. So for me, uh, 
what I want from Awesome Richards is to see him give competitive reps at tackle. I don't know what I'm going to get, though, to be honest. But that would be what I would want from him. If Justin Rogers starts at nose tackle for this team, are they in trouble? Uh, no. I, I mean, Jay Ratliff was a, and I'm not saying Justin Rogers will be Jay Ratliff, but another Auburn, Auburn defensive tackle. Here, yeah, another another Auburn defensive tackle. Jay Ratliff was a, you know, good player pretty quickly as a a late round draft pick. Um, Antoine Woods gave you solid one technique uh, snaps for two years as a guy who was just picked up off the the trash heap essentially of the mm -hmm. NFL. Um, so no, I, I don't. I, I don't think that that naturally tells me they're in trouble. If Justin Rogers can come in here and be competitive and and do a few things, then yeah, I think he can absolutely hold that role down. Uh, I would say that that's a damning indictment on Mozzie Smith, probably. Yeah. That that would be more concerning to me about what does it mean about Mozzie Smith than necessarily Justin Rogers as a problem. But it's no different to me than the idea of like if the Cowboys have to start seventh rounder Jalen Brooks mm -hmm. as their third wide receiver are they in trouble well no like I mean I think that could still be like they're elevating their play it just may say something about the guy behind him it may say something about Mozzie Smith it may say something about Jalen Tolbert so no not necessarily but I, I would love to see Mozzie Smith seize that job is Donovan Wilson's job in trouble why are you trying to replace Donovan Wilson all the time just ask Wait, why, why, why are you trying to get rid of my guy there no I know um <sighs> I, I don't think it's as vulnerable, I think, as as you suspect it might be. Um, not because of anything I've heard or I, anything I'm else. Not, I'm the same way. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, we're just. I, 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 I'm friends with Mike Zimmer and stuff, but I've never talked to Mike about this particular player. I just I'm I'm looking at traits and thinking, hey, a lot of people's jobs are on the line. That's a veteran in the secondary um, that's somebody who plays with a lot of physicality. One of your more physical defenders on defense. Does he have his flaws? Absolutely. Um, but I think that, yeah, Wanye Thomas, eventually, maybe that's his role. I just don't know that right now, uh, that his job would be on the line. I I'm going to lean towards, I don't think it is at least for this year, for the long term. he's probably not getting another contract here, but I think that Donovan Wilson is ultimately going to be your starter this year. How would you describe the Cowboy quarterback room? Oh, um, um, uh, expiring. Yeah. <laughs> Every and nobody's yeah, on a like, nobody's yeah. nobody's under contract past yeah. this year. Nobody, um, yeah, it's like it, it. It's almost it's. I don't want to say the word interesting, but it's kind of a, a unique strategy to not have any of your quarterbacks basically under contract for 2020. Now we'll see what happens, but you can make an argument. It's a review period. Up, we, we, we asked this on the radio on 105.3, the fan on the G bag nation today. I asked this question. If you're Mike McCarthy, you're a pro, you're, you're a pro coach. Mm -hmm. Do you have any, any real loyalty to try and develop Trey Lance? I mean, considering uh, what we just talked about. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, contract extension. Am I, you know, I know if I, I'm going to have to have Dak to play at a MVP like level like he did last year. No, it's a good point because if you want to save your job, Dak Prescott has to play really well. So you have, you if, really Trey, wanna, you can't if Trey really Lance is start, if, if yeah. Trey Lance is starting next year, you're not here as the head coach. So what do you care? Yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Are you going to lose? Is this Trey Lance thing going to be just one bad loss of a fourth round pick? That's because that's been my fear the whole goes, time. Your yeah. Quarterback goes. Could they? And maybe that maybe a new coach would come in here and they don't want anything to do with Trey Lance. You know, maybe sure. Maybe it is Ben Johnson from the Detroit Lions. You know, and you go that route, and you and he's like, well, no, I don't, you know, I don't think Trey Lance. We're fine. We'll move on. We're good. Yeah. See, I, I think, yeah, the room I would say is right, expiring, because they're all, it's it's really an unusual strategy, isn't it? Yeah, I don't, 
I I don't they know. They still sign these guys. Don't get me wrong. They could. I think it's just right now. It's not seeming likely. I just yeah. I I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. And there's this weird dynamic that exists throughout the whole building, not just the quarterback room, of everybody on these one year deals mm -hmm. and on these lame duck seasons. And it's it's a bizarre spot to be in. That's why I I just would think. I understand if you have questions, you're not going to do it. But man, if I'm Jerry and Steven, and this is more about a negotiating ploy with Dak Prescott, I would say you need to stop playing games, just get it done over the next four weeks. Just enter training camp with that in hand, at least, because mm -hmm. it's going to be really tough across the board, I think, for everybody to sort of what was talked about in the very first segment the idea of like everybody under one year deals, there's no security. I yeah. provide I just, some security somewhere, some yeah. stability, even if it's on the roster. See, I just worry about the whole thing was. What is Mike McCarthy's other than being a pro coach and being, you know, being, you know, mm -hmm. and seeing this through? What is his? What is his? What is his motivation to develop Troy to Trey Lance? He owes nothing to Trey Lance or he or, he, uh, or his if you development. Look at it. Jerry Jones even talked about he didn't need anybody's approval to make the deal. Yeah, this is exactly. So I mean, McCarthy. yeah, there, there's there's none there. Um, if anything, it would be. The only thing you would have to do to developing Trey Lance is the idea that I'm going to have Dak Prescott here. We're going to play really good football. We're all going to get extensions and I'm going to develop Trey Lance so that he, we can put him on display and move him in the future. So uh, before we get to the mailbag, Brian, you got one more? Nope. You're good, bro. Thank you. Bro. All right. Uh, thank you. Those were good questions, Brian. I enjoyed that. Good answer. You are... You are listening to the Love the Star podcast. The Love the Star is an Odyssey podcast. You can find it on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Brian, it is now time for our Dean Julia Love the Star mailbag. We'll return things over to our dear, sweet listeners for their thoughts, their comments, their questions. Uh, first one here, let's go with the question from uh, Damon. Uh, Damon says, with the new kickoff rules, when are the Cowboys going to re-sign Jeff Heath to be their kickoff specialist? He says he's kidding. Uh, although, did you see uh, that's now the discussion with Justin Reed yeah. that he's going to take over kickoffs yeah. in Kansas City, which he can kick. I, I mean, see, but let me give you something interesting, Bobby. I watched that, you know, on day three, the final practice they did kickoff return stuff, mm -hmm. and kickoff. It's fascinating. It really, really is. If you're a kicker and you don't – say you try and kick the ball with some height yep. and then bring it down, if these returners get a running start, you're dead. You're, the ball's yeah. going to be at the 50. And it happened – they were working on the kicking aspect, and every time that Turpin or Vaughn got the ball on the run, by the time they're running up on it to catch and then go, the ball seemed like it was at the 50-yard line every time. Yep. But I, I mean, the that's, defense even had a time to react. There's going to have to be a lot of tweaks and adjustments, and I, I'm going to be interested unique, to see what... I know, yeah, we can't talk about scheme right now. On, you know, Maybe in training camp we can, but there are some unique blocking things that 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 uh bones that was whole, coming up with and some interesting alignments that, that and so, stuff that the whole league is going to likely yeah. be involved with yeah. damon says on a serious note though he said is there anyone on the current roster who could handle kickoff duties that would be better covering slash tackling than aubrey i don't know i'm trying to think if they've got an emergency kicker uh i don't i can't recall that there's would one that's Brian out Anger? there but but in terms of if you're talking about one of these emergency guys like um, oh, Jeff Heath tackle? used to be, somebody that Jeff like that Jeff Heath used to be, because um, I mean that would be an advantage uh, the way these things are are done. I know that there's some people who, you know, feel like there's about eight different ways that you can cut at the strategy for these kickoffs, and you know, a lot of teams are going to be filling this thing out. Uh, it's a good question. It's one we'll we'll work on in training camp, I would guess, um, or the weeks leading up to it. Is just hey, who are the guys on the roster who are yeah. Let's say Anger and Aubrey both just, you know, twist their ankles uh, in a three-legged race or something. Uh, how do you uh, end up handling the kick in the rest of the game? So, good question, Damon. I don't know of anybody off the top of my head. I think the plan for now, though, is that it's still uh, going to be Aubrey. Uh, next question here from Jeffrey. Brian, who is somebody we think is safe from roster cuts but actually needs to show something in camp? Wow. Where are you at on... Where are you, where are you at on Nation Wright and those guys? Yeah, I think Wright is a big yeah. one. Um, you know, how about if, like how if, about how about Josh Ball? Yeah, if we're talking about guys who, like he just said, 
we think they're safe. Like, like somebody that I think is firmly on the 53, but right. this is big for them to, hey, you need to show up. I don't think Sam Williams is going to get cut at the end of training camp, but Sam Williams needs to have a good training camp. How about Chauncey Golston? Golston's a good one. Golston is, if they had enough bodies, Golston would be on the bubble, I think. I just don't know that they have enough bodies. But, I mean, Clark, guys that stand out who are like kind of make it break ears, Nashawn Wright, Damone Clark, who we talked about a little bit ago, Chauncey Golston, Jalen Tolbert mm -hmm. is in there, Josh Ball is... Matt well, let's go might be in that range Peyton with them. Hendershot. Yeah, I think Hendershot is I think Hendershot is firmly on a bubble, I if not teetering. You, yeah, I think you're bubbling right there. You're right. And so yeah, I mean I think that those are are guys that stand out. Uh, you know, this could be like to Brian's point earlier, it could be a big camp, not as a cut candidate, not on the bubble, but maybe Donovan Wilson doesn't show enough and happens to get his job snatched. Like that could be something where he needs to show up and and needs to contribute to high level. Probably a big camp too for Jordan Lewis. Yeah, I, um, to, I, to hold I, on to that job. Next one I'd mention. Yeah, I don't think gets cut, but to hold on to his job if he wants that role, then I, I think that that's going to be a big one. So those are some of the names that I think stand out for me. Uh, Brian, next question here from Starlin. Uh, while the turnovers were great under Dan Quinn, it also seemed like we struggled to get off the field on key third downs. Do you believe Zimmer's defense will have a better three and out or third down stop quality than Quinn's defense did? Yeah, Michael Tay, he's probably, and I've said this on a bunch of platforms, Michael Tay, he's probably not going to create the turnovers. He'll say, he'll, he'll, he says, we'll see, but he's kind of warning people that the turnovers might not be there, but he ain't going to give up big plays. So, no big plays, and he wants negative ones. And he wants negative plays. So, yes, I think that, I think you will see, Dan did a really good job with some of his blitz package stuff. I think Mike can do the same thing. I think Mike's going to play a little bit more sounder coverage with these guys. So yeah, and yeah, more and more complex. On, yeah, if you that, don't have crazy penalties, though, you know, hands to the face, roughing the quarterback, you know, illegal contact, defensive holding. Sure, you know, they no. they got a lot of them. Those they a lot of those penalties. Yeah, and I think the I, I think not only sound coverage, but that's why they're going to be the guys in that secondary are going to be tested a lot because there's a lot of com, you know, like complex things that Mike Zimmer likes to do pre-snap yeah. disguise a lot of things. Mike Dan Quinn was generally pretty static with his coverage and mm -hmm. you, you knew what you were going to do. Mike Zimmer has implemented a lot of different, you know, disguises and you know, you'll see it's not unusual to see, Oh, you've got a safety creeping up and then this ball snap and they're booking it to go back and play deep middle or, you know, they, they are, he does a lot of different things to try and confuse, uh, you know, offenses and quarterbacks about what they see when they walk up to the line of scrimmage. Um, all right, Brian. Uh, next question here. Uh, we'll we'll wrap things up here with a question from Ryan. Ryan wants to know: Is it fair or unfair? And I think we can tie this back to kind of the first topic we had. Is it fair or unfair to think the Cowboys are a, are a poorly run organization? They aren't at the bottom of the league, bad, but they ne they just never seem to reach their full potential. Is that a bad organization, culture, or just bad luck? Brian, how would you, if somebody were to say, are the Cowboys a well-run organization? To me, that's a loaded question, but yeah. how would you how would you parse that out? Man, I worked for the group for a long time, and uh, yeah, we weren't good. And the one thing that Jerry and Steven did was they moved on from the guys that, you know, were, that were holding you back, I guess. And, you know, I'm, I'm, that was part of the staff. They just, you know, they found a way to get some guys in place and, you know, they drafted better and stuff like that. I don't think they're a poorly run organization. I do feel like, though, there are things that they could absolutely do better to try and get ahead of the game. And they've tried to get it ahead of the game with some signings, but it seems they get it ahead of the games with signings of hurt players. You go back, I go all the way back to Barry Church, extensions on him, Tyron Crawford, guys like that, guys that were kind of banged up, shoulder problems, knee problems, Achilles problems. Look at, you know, Steele, look at uh, Gallup. You know, they, you know, they seem to have like, kind of like said, okay, we'll get, get the signing, uh, Jalen Smith, you know, they haven't, it's either they, they get massively over, they get strung out where they get overpaid or they get the bargain guy that was hurt. And now we have an opportunity. So there's, I just, I think they're a, 
I think they're a good organization when overall you look at the personnel department. They draft well. They sign well. They sign guys well. They win a lot of games. You know, there's. I mean, if you were a bad organization, you're not winning games. You know, but I do think there's some things that they could try and do differently to get out in front of some of these contracts. And they've been unfortunate in some ways. They haven't got the contracts staggered like they need to have them staggered. They're all appearing at the same time. So that that's. You know that you 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 don't you don't have problems with your cap and stuff. If they had problems with their cap and stuff, it'd be because they they overpaid for some players that weren't any good. Okay, I will say they that was a miss on Ezekiel Elliott. That was a miss on 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 Gallup for sure. Was there that was a miss? You know they've had some misses along the way. Yeah. But man, man, they like I say the way they obtain players, I think is a good way. How they sign players long term, I that's that's the one, and I hate numbers. I mean, I, I hate numbers. So, Adam Pacifica, Todd Williams, you know, Stephen Jones. I think that there's been some bad luck with the staggers, but I also wonder why. You know, are they do they not have a good enough relationship with agents? to get these deals done in a timely manner. Yeah, I think um again it's a very loaded question. Know, it's not I, a bad it's that, not that a bad question. Probably everybody hates that answer, but No, it's not, it's and it's not I I want to be clear about that. It's not a bad question uh that was just asked. It's just it's a it's a one that is difficult yeah, to parse out a little bit. Yeah. Here's here's what I'll bad. say. If we don't say they're bad, we're homers. If we do say it's bad, it's like, well, but you know, Draft and I think it's just it's it's a nuanced thing. Like, what do you mean when you say are they a poorly run organization? Yeah. So here's here's what I'll say. I'll just I'll list I'll define their characteristics or what I think they do well and what I think they do poorly, yeah. and then I'll leave that up to you to decide if that fits your definition. Which ones check the boxes of what you think is a well run organization? What the Cowboys do well, um, they've got a incredibly strong personnel department. Um, pro and college scouting is fantastic um they're they've got a great group there um will mcclay has overseen a lot of that they are wildly not just in the personnel department and this was not always the truth about the dallas cowboys under jerry jones they are wildly stable for the most part and i'm not just talking about the personnel department and generally coaches and core players they are a stable organization with you know support staff and people at their stadium and within their buildings um I think that that's a big check mark in their favor. I think that they are not, they, they embody a little bit of, and this again was not really the case years ago. They embody a little bit of the Rooney family method of let, let's, let's give them, you know, let's support them continuity. Being let's give patient. them time. The patience is a lot better than it was years ago. I think that's something where they've, they've learned to develop. I think that Jerry and and the the front office structure, I think they've got a really strong decision making process where they cultivate consensus, have discussions, break it down, answer any objections, try to work through it. It's almost like a jury trying to get a twelve zero decision, where it's like, all right, we've got an objection here, let's work through this. Like, let's stop. And I mean, I, I really respect that process. So those are all checks in their favor. The negative side of it, um, some of that same patience that they have now um and again not just within the core roster but probably a lot of different areas throughout you know the organizational structure uh it becomes overly loyal at times probably in some instances you respect it for the most part but there's some areas where it's like has has that area been the same for far too long is there is there enough advancement is there enough learning is there enough uh forward progress there i think that that has bit them a couple times uh they tried way too often to win the negotiation that's too big of a priority for them instead yes, of absolutely. instead of securing the player they want to win the negotiation and that has i think made things difficult for them in the past um i think let, let, let me jump back one more that i think is i think should be a check in their favor Maybe in some respects, they've had it happen before. I can think of some interactions with Seattle. But for the most part, I think that they are business is business. 
I'm not holding anything personal against you. Like, all right, like I think that they they are really they don't let personal feelings get in the way of them making a move or getting a deal done. They can, as Steven has said on 105 through the fan before, they can mother F somebody across the table and still get it done and go out and have drinks afterwards. And so I do respect their ability to compartmentalize in those moments. Um, and so those are positives. Negatives, again, like I just said, some of that organizational, um, you know, commitment to some areas that probably needed to be revised or changed or adjusted. Um, that's a big one. And then some of the what the priority is in terms of the negotiation. And to be honest, this is the obvious one. and Everybody knows it. Sometimes you wonder, is the main thing the main thing all the time? I think that it's overblown a little bit. I don't think it's as much of a problem as people who leave here try to say, or as people from the outside try to say, or fans who are trying to put a, a finger on it. But I think that at times it's it's not as big a deal as people say it is, but I think it is an issue at times. And not enough that it should have kept them for one in a Super Bowl over the course of this time, but enough that it probably is a little bit of a difficulty multiplier in some sections to, to do your job. Um, at the very high level, not impossible, but it creates some natural hurdles. And so all of that is how I would think are the, the checks and the, like, those are the good and the bad for me that stand out about them as an organizational structure. So for you listening there, yeah, you know, a, a, anybody who's wondering about that question, I think you just have to decide which one of those things do you think makes them well, good or bad or whatever else. The Jones family. There's sure. A lot of hate, but you know, everything, I think your checklist you went through is right on accurate. Absolutely. So look, see what a what a nice way for us to to end. It's uh it's just a pleasant way. We agree completely, Brian brought us. That does it for us here today on the Love of the Star podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh see, look, we had a good we went over, we went forty six minutes, Brian, in a dead period. Look at that. There, we we get yep. we get talking and and it just goes. You had the long winded answers today, not me. I did. Mm -hmm. I know. It's it's my bad. This is this was a lot of me, and I'm sure the YouTube comments are bitching me out right now for it so uh, they, they want to hear all the, they want to hear all the brian brought us stories yeah. is what they want they do i'm telling you we're doing brian brought us uh story time on one of these episodes coming up I before training camp story about parcells he hated me for that i know we're gonna we're gonna go deep though we're gonna like uh we're just gonna i'm gonna pull random names out of a hat but and be like tell me a story about media guys every time i went to his office <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna have a name of uh, a hat full of names of people you've worked with, like big people, and I'm just gonna pull out a name, and be like, "Tell me a story about this person." Wow, and we're gonna do an episode idea. like that. I like that. Yeah. All right, uh, that does it for us here today on the Love the Star podcast. Again, thank you so much uh, for joining us today, and thank you to our uh, supporters over at Chill Boys, ChillBoys.com. Promo code Star for fifteen percent off. That's the way you can support us is by going and get you some Chill Boy Chill Boys gear, and that'll support you as well. It'll support uh, everything and hold it in place. Uh, in a really pleasant manner. Uh, that does it for us here today on the Love the Star podcast. For Brian Broaddus, I'm Bobby Belt. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you guys again later. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. If you want to see more of our videos, be sure to check out our playlist and let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media to stay up to date on our latest updates. Links are in the description. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.